says in the uh, opening verses of this, it says, To him who loves and has set us free from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priest is to his God and Father. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see, including those who pierced him, and all the families of the earth will mourn over him. This is certain. Amen, amen and amen. 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 This is the hope that we hold on to, folks. And this is the reason why you can show up in Mims, Texas on a Wednesday night and have hope in your life and believe and know that Christ is real and whatever you're dealing with, be it good, bad, or just life itself, this too shall pass. Amen. And in that, we will have the glory and resurrection of Jesus Christ because that's the hope we stand on by the blood of Christ. Amen. 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 And amen. <coughs> so, I don't know if I've met you before. I hate to call you out in the middle of service, but I've got a, I didn't recognize him. Yes, is this, the, is this the guy that's coming in to work on the... This is my helicopter genius. It's a helicopter Oh, the genius. helicopter so, genius. And your name, sir? Oh, Kyle Carter. Kyle Carter. Kyle, thanks for visiting with us tonight. Uh, have you been here before? No, yeah. he, he, uh, he said he wanted to come so he could make faces at me while I was trying. That's right. That's right. Uh, <laughs> you know? Has he you to fly? Yeah, we <laughs> Did you pay him to come up here, or did you just not? No, no, no. Did you said he couldn't. Trying to pay him to stay home. Anyway, uh, today I was uh, uh, started the day with a doctor's appointment and then customer visits and the funeral. So I called Joe yesterday, knowing the schedule, and said, "Hey, would you come up tonight and uh, give us a second installment of?" Oh wow! <laughs> you should add a picture. Uh, well, that's, you, you know. Anyway, so uh, tonight I'm going to turn the, uh, the, the the message over a couple. A couple or, or last earlier in the month, Joe spoke to us in the men's meeting about the trip, trip that him and Terry went on uh, to uh, see the ark and to take a couple of weeks off. And uh, I think that was great for jo Joe to, to get away for uh, a couple of weeks. But uh, in that, he came back with a, a, a unique perspective on what he saw. So uh, I asked him to uh, share that with y'all tonight, and I, I hope you enjoyed it as well. So, Brother Joe, All right. let me turn you on, brother. <laughs> All right, y'all. <laughs> see what I'm working with here? Well, I'll tell you. Yeah. It's, uh, it's turned this way, right? I hope so. We can't hear you. Huh? Can't hear, you. can't hear me. Nope. You didn't turn me on good enough, I guess. I don't know. Oh, he's. Huh? Yeah. Oh, he's going to turn it up back there. You got it now? Okay. Well, anyway, uh. I was thinking about Tim today. I heard a joke I just had to tell you. It seems that uh, his pastor died and he got to the pearly gates and there's, you know, the story about St. Peter and all this kind of stuff. And when he gets there, there's this guy, he's got dreadlocks and these big things. he got 400 chains around his neck and tattoos head to toe and all this kind of stuff, you know. And, and uh, St. Peter asked him, says, uh, well, you know, what's your name and, and where are you from? He said, I'll see if you're, you know, coming in. So the guy says, ah, I'm uh, such and such, I'm from New York City, you know. And uh, he looks and he says, oh, yeah, well, he said, here's a golden staff and this brand new silk robe and all that. He said, come on in. So the pastor walks up there, you know, he, he throws his chest back and he said, where are you from? He said, I'm from such and such, uh, Kentucky, so I'm, a, uh, I'm a Baptist preacher, uh, such and such Baptist church. The Lord looked at it and he looked and he says, Oh, yeah. He says, well, here's this cotton robe and this old wooden stick. He said, you, you can come on in. He says, well, wait a minute, man. He says, I've been, I've been preaching for 40 years. And you give me a cotton robe and a wooden stick? He said, yeah, man. He said, that other guy was a taxi driver. He said, while you preached, people slept. While he drove, they prayed. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I'd like to start off by reading the... Uh, uh, a passage in uh, Exodus. I think it's Exodus 14, but I better look at my notes. I, I, I took a, just a short sermon, so it's only like six pages. So Exodus 14, verses 13 and 14. If y'all stand and read, let me read God's Word. Honor His Word by standing, if you don't mind. You said 14? Yeah, Exodus 14. i got to find it myself. Uh, <laughs> verses 13 and 14. Okay. It says, And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. 
<laughs> Can we go to the Lord in prayer? Mm -hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that I asked you to, to, to bless the words that uh, I'm trying to, to, to convey today, dear Lord, that you get the honor and you get the glory, dear Lord. If there's anybody in here that's seeking you uh, or is missing something in their life, dear Lord, that I ask that uh, they touch their heart and bring them to you. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I, uh, I told Tim or Tim and all at the uh, at the the man, man camp back there uh, about our trip to uh, we went up, went to the Noah's Ark and I went to the Creation Museum and I I, uh, I ended up uh, enjoying it you know uh, we went to the uh, Noah's Ark first and you see it from a long ways away. And you look at it, you know, and it's like, yeah, it's pretty big, you know. It's a big piece of wood, big long thing, you know. And uh, uh, but there, there was something about the on the trip that really, uh, and I, I, this is the way I put it when I was telling them. Uh, I was, and by the way, Chris Tudor kind of caught me off guard. That's why I was actually talking back there because he called me and asked me. He said, "Hey, what are you doing?" And I talked for a second. He says, "Are you coming to man camp?" Which sometimes I can't make it, you know. And I said, yeah, yeah, I'm going to make it. He said, really, you going to make it, huh? And I said, yeah, I'm going to make it. He said, good, would you mind talking? <laughs> what can I say then, right? So anyway, so I put me on the spot. But anyway, uh, so when we went on this trip, uh, I, I was telling the, the, the people, the guys back there, I said, uh, there was something that really just touched me. Uh, I, I, I kind of have a hard time describing it. it. It wasn't like I was amazed or, or whatever, but it just something that it just, it, it caught me off guard that it hit me. So we get to Noah's Ark, and then of course we park and we see it, whatever, then you take a bus ride up to it. But when you drive up to it, it's like, hey buddy, this thing big, you know, and you're like, wow, man, that's a, that's a pretty good piece of work, you know, and the gardens and all that stuff out there. But that really wasn't what amazed me. It was nice and all, but, you know, it's a big boat, right? So we walked around outside, got our tickets, all this stuff, and we go inside. You walk inside, and it's pretty amazing. And they've got it laid out with cages and, and little, uh, like a kiosk type deal on, on all the wall. And they got replicas of the vessels and stuff where they kept water in and the plants where they grew in there to eat or whatever, you know. And they kept it, uh, they kept it, uh, of course, I guess nobody knows exactly, right, how, how it actually goes on the inside. But even all the cages, I mean, they weren't like chicken wire. But they had to have wooden pickets because that's what they had during the time, right? And so I had the big ones in the outside and the little ones, and they had supposedly animals in each one of them. You could hear the noises and all that stuff. And you look at it, and it's just rows, you know. And uh, that wasn't what amazed me. So we get to walking around through this thing. And uh, I started looking at the, the, the structure itself. Can't help it, you know, <laughs> look at it, the mechanical part of it, right? And they didn't use bolts. They had wooden pegs of a different kind of wood that held the wood, the big boards or whatever you call it, the beams together, because the, that would get wet and swell up and it would tighten it. It would actually move. It wouldn't break because they did. I'm sure they didn't have forging back then or whatever, you know. So, so that if you look at all that stuff and these great big, uh, they were actual trees that they had up on the inside of it, supporting it, just like he had supposedly built it. And this thing is all a scale supposedly. So, uh, but if you look at all the structure, you can stand in one side of it and look all the way up to the fourth floor, you know, and you 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 see that. And you think about a a man in Noah's time that built this all by hand, you know, and it's it, it's it's really amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something. To, it really is something to see. But that wasn't what amazed me. We walked out of there. We left there. Went over to the Creation Museum, and it's about forty miles down the road. And uh, if you, if you, and I won't say I wasn't impressed. I, I mean, it, it is it's very very nice. But if you're a, uh, 
I guess a student of the Bible, right? You go to each, you just go to the first one, and here's Genesis and Adam, and then you go through, to, you know, Abraham, and so you, get to, you you're kind of reading the Bible as you go. And I was like, well, you know, I've already read this a dozen times. I know, you know, you knew we're going to be around the next corner because you knew your scripture, right? So you go around, uh, but it was pretty well laid out, and they had, you know, Adam and Eve working in the garden and all these type of things, and uh, uh, they had there were several things in there uh, when you went up to the little kiosk or whatever for say Abraham or whatever uh, and how things were made the, they had a deal in there on the, the birth of a child uh, and they had like 10 or 12 <laughs> screens uh, like computer screens and you could look at them and they started off with uh, like three days you know after uh, 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 the, the, the cell and the egg or whatever it is gets together and all that you know and it showed the process all the way through and you stand there and you look at it and you start reading and it says this and this and this, you know, and you get, you know, six or eight days or ten days or whatever it is. And it said, and of course you're standing back looking at it and it says uh, the vertebrae, the brain, the this and that kind of stuff. And then underneath it there's this little tag. And it says, it's got a little arrow point and it says, and this is the size of it. Well, I had to. You know, I had to get up at one, you know, and, and, and it still had the brain, the vertebrae, the heart's beating and all this, and it's like the size of a pea. Wow. You know, and, and it's like, well, I, that's, I, I never thought of it, you know. And of course, then it goes through the whole thing of the nine months or whatever, you know. But there's a lot of things like that that are very amazing, and along the way, they have, uh, and if you're physics buff or whatever, it's, it's pretty cool to me. They have the creationist view and the evolution view, you know, comparative side by side as one goes to the other and how they measure the earth and all. Uh, and so it's pretty amazing. But that wasn't what amazed me. At four o'clock, we found a sign that says uh, it's going to be a concert. And it, they named off somebody that I've never heard of. They said, oh, she done one nine Emmys, or was it Emmys, whatever, is that what it was, Emmys? And uh, gonna, she was going to sing, you know, and all this kind of stuff. So, but, yeah, you know what, we'll bully these over there and sing. So we go and we find this auditorium and we walk in. And when we walked in, I mean, it's, it's a big thing, you know. And it's full to the back. You know, I mean, it's, when we got there at 4 o'clock, you know. <laughs> I asked this guy, I said, man, I said, uh, of course, a couple of ushers or whatever, I said, what, uh, well, you know, he said, man, you just have to kind of find a place to sit. Well, luckily, we'd right on the kind of the back row, there was a couple of places, and we sat down. And here's the amazing part. <laughs> These people started singing, and people started standing up and clapping their hands and praising the Lord and singing with them. And I'm, I'm kind of, you know, looking around, whatever, you know, and I'm like, wow, this, it, 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 it's, it's eye-opening to me, I guess. And here's why. I don't know if y'all have ever uh, felt this way, but have you ever felt like the Christian, so to speak, or the, the, the godly person, however you want to classify it, is the minority? Sometimes I feel like I'm the only guy, not the only guy, but you know, you, you're, the, you're the isolated. Everywhere in the world is evil and bad, and, th and the Christian is just the nobody. The guy, when we were walking through that creation museum, well, it did the same thing at Noah's Ark. I said, it's a big old place, you know, I said, uh, you know, a lot of people here. And he says, eh, not really. And I mean, there was cars, RV, you know. And I said, no, no. He said, no. He said, pretty slow day today. He said, anywhere three to 5,000 people. And I was like, that's a slow day, huh? He said, oh, yeah. You know, I asked him, I said, you got, uh, <coughs> excuse me. I said, you sure got it. Before I said that, I said, you sure got a lot of RV spots there. I said, you reckon you got enough? Because they wasn't full, you know. And he said, well, sometimes we do. I said, sometimes? He said, yeah, he said, sometimes they have to park along the fence around. And I mean, there was probably 250 RV spots there, you know. Uh, and he says, yeah, he says, uh, this place is packed. And you're here on a very, very slow day. And there's three to 5,000 people here. 
Wow. And you see people from everywhere in the world there. It's so heartwarming to see a mother talking to her little child, explaining Adam and Eve or Abraham and Joseph or what, you know, and reading the scripture to them. Mm -hmm. You know, it just, it touches your heart. Uh, have you ever thought that God was not with you? I have. And, and uh, I've been places where I didn't think God even close, you know. Uh, but God is always with us. Uh, I felt like sometimes that, and I know it's, it's an odd feeling that you're the only Christian in the world sometimes. You, everywhere you go, there's, uh, I mean, and you look at the morality or, well, I'll say the lack of we have in the world today. Uh, you can't turn on the television without something that's sexual uh, uh, or, you know, uh, the transgender deal. Did you ever think something like that would ever come along? I mean, it's, and now it's, it's, it's acceptable. I've never seen such immoral conduct in all my life. And... And I'm not that old, and I mean, I mean, I'm not young for sure. But you know, but still, I would have never thought I'd seen two guys kissing on, on a television screen, <laughs> selling some kind of drugs to get rid of their AIDS because they were homosexual. <laughs> and, and it's like, mm -hmm. don't you know the cause? I mean, you know. <laughs> anyway, uh, and it reminds me too of Isaiah. If you read a scripture in Isaiah, uh, Isaiah chapter five, verses eighteen, is one of my, I guess, verses that I quote. Uh, to myself all the time. Anytime I see a, 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 a commercial like that or, you know, conduct this in a way. And if you'll turn to Isaiah, let's see, chapter 5, I'll read it to you. The Lord says, Woe to those who draw iniquity with cords of vanity and sin if it's with a cart rope. The first time I ever read that, the first thing I thought of was one of those uh, gay pride parades. Mm -hmm. They're just prancing it around. Mm -hmm. You know, look at us, you know. Uh, it's kind of crazy. I, I was, it says, woe to those, if you continue on reading, it says, woe to those that call evil good and good evil. Mm -hmm. We're living in a country that does that. Oh, yes. I'm sorry? Isaiah well, chapter 4. Chapter 5, yeah, chapter 5, verse, uh, yeah, what is it, uh, 18, 5, 18? Yeah. yeah. And you can read through there uh, and see what it says. But, uh, and the reason I bring this up is is because, I, like I said, when we were at the ark, and you see that deal, I felt like sometimes that we were all alone. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of times we perceive that we are alone. And God isn't with us. He's not helping us. You know, sometimes you think, why doesn't God just wipe all these people out? You know, and, and, and get rid of the evil. I've thought about it over the years. Uh, why did God allow Satan to tempt Eve and Adam? He ain't getting out of it either. Yeah. You know, it would have been so easy to wipe him out. Mm -hmm. You know, but then in reality, we wouldn't choose God over Satan, you know. And a forced relationship is no relationship at all. Right? Right. So, but I wonder why that didn't happen, you know. Uh, I, I think about the Lord being with us all the time. I've been in a place one time, and I told you all about it, that, that I really didn't think the Lord was there, you know. Uh, if he was, he wasn't giving me nothing to eat anyway. So <laughs> I, I was in pretty bad shape for a while, and I thought about it a lot of times. Why? Why? You know. Uh, if you go back to, to uh, Exodus and you read where uh, Moses tells them, he says, just stand still and let the Lord fight your fight. Don't worry about it. it uh, everything's good. Well, we're in that situation a lot of times, but I don't think we are actually backed up to the Red Sea and see the Egyptians pouring down on us. You know, you've got to have a pretty good bit of faith to see the entire Egyptian army coming to you. And there's water on one side of them on the other. And here's this guy says, take it easy, hey, no, no problem. It's going to be all right. The Lord's going to fight your battle. 
I find myself thinking that, man, I've doubted that the Lord would help me. And I ain't never been in a situation like that. I often wondered too, why did God harden Pharaoh's heart during that same situation where he put all the plagues on him and all that? He did it for his own glory, right? So that he could show the Israelites he was their deliverer. Nobody else, right? When we're put into a situation, maybe not that drastic, right? We're always looking for the way out. You know, what would happen if all two million, I don't know how many million it was, uh, all the Hebrews would have just took off running down the banks, you know, and scattered, you know? What would that have done for God? He would have, well, there they go again, you know, every time I try to help them, they turn around and blow it, you know? And of course, that's been the, the kind of the example of all the, the Hebrews that, through the years. I think God sometimes has a pretty good sense of humor, you know, uh, when he, Looks at some of some of y'all. I should say some of you, us, but I'll say some of y'all. You know, uh, but God uses these times in our lives to, uh, to to glorify Himself, and what that does is takes that pride element that we're all uh, filled with. Mm -hmm. Yep, I did it. You know, I did it on my own. Well, God put the Jews, I say the Jews, the, the Hebrews in that situation, and he did it several times. There was no other way. They were in an impossible situation to where nobody except God could pull them out of it. And he did that for a reason. Well, two reasons, of course, to show them. But he also showed everybody else, like the, the that. Pharaoh wasn't the man he thought he was, right? You know. But we get in those situations all the time to where we turn around and let, I guess, the world, well, you know what, and Tim says it a lot of times too, we turn around and try to fix it ourselves, you know. And I know I'm speaking about me, you know, because and, and he's the same way. You know, I feel like I can fix anything, right, you know. Uh, just give me enough time, right? <laughs> you know? But but the Lord needs us to rely on Him. You know, uh, be quiet, sit and listen for the Lord. Hebrews chapter thirteen says, uh, let's "See, let me see if I can find it. I think it's thirteen. Oh, I got it down somewhere. I think thirteen five. It, and this is." Part of it, I, I was looking at. They says uh, he says in verse five in, in the latter part of that it says, "I will never leave you nor forsake you." I found like four different times today, just flipping through the Bible, that that same line quotation is used. I don't think he was misquoted four or five times, right? You know, that's what God said. I'll never leave you. But there's a caveat to that. And it's in the previous verse. Mm, yeah, well, we kind of like, as Christians, we kind of like to pull out the little section that we like, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> and, then, and then, well, the rest of it, you know, we'll worry about that later. Uh, uh, 13.4. It says, let your conduct be without covetousness. Oh, excuse me. It says, be content with such things as you have. For he himself said, he'll never leave you. We have to follow God's rules, regulations, and he'll take care of us, you know. We don't have to fix everything ourselves, you know. And I'm telling you, that's one of the hardest things I can do. And just to be honest, it, 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 man, I think I need to get my hand in everything. And, and it's, it's so hard, and I, and I, I say it is, I, well, I don't know, but I mean, to me, it was, it's probably harder for a man to let things go, you know. Uh, you, you feel like you have to be the, the knucklehead that fixes everything, you know, and, uh, you know, all that type of stuff, you know. But, but he didn't. The battle is his, right? That's where we get confused. We think the battle is between us and Satan, right? But it ain't. You know, we're just kind of participants in it. 
It's the battle between God and Satan. You know, and and we know that we're studying Revelation. That we're starting the book of Revelation in my class. And we'll get into it pretty good. But we know the battle's already won. We've already seen the final play. Matter of fact, we've seen it to where we won't even be here and we can still see it. Right? You know, so after chapter 4, I always say we'll be looking from the orchestra section, you know, uh, you know sitting down looking at, looking, looking to see what's going on, right? Uh, because not only do we know what's, what, what, what's going to happen when we are gone from here, whether it be us passing away or the rapture, but we also know how the end of what we consider time is going to be. Well, if you already know the end, why do I worry about what's going on tomorrow? It's a tough one, ain't it? I mean, I know we're here to do things, and we God don't want us to, uh, what do they call them guys that sit up in the mountain up there and just moan and all that kind of stuff, you know, and, and uh, gurus or whatever they call them, you know. He don't want us to do that kind of stuff, you know. But we all have occupations and all, but along with that occupation and then, you know, uh, taking care of your wife and kids and all that kind of stuff. All that does, in reality, is gives you the opportunity <coughs> to spread the word of the God to other people. You know, one of the things that I that I was telling you that amazed me the people, you know, that were in that building singing and all. There was people from everywhere in the world, you know, and none of them. Knew the next guy, right? You know, I mean, it wasn't like, well, I ain't going to say nothing. I kind of, you know, I'm kind of keep to myself. They all just turned loose, you know? And it's it just like, well, man, I like this. You know, that was, it, was, it was just so uplifting, you know, that it just, man, here's people from all over the world that's just piled together in one room, and every one of us praising the Lord with every ounce of energy they had. And that was one of the most amazing things. I had ever seen or witnessed. I've never been to a uh, uh, what do you call it? Like, uh, uh, Christian Christian concerts? Mm -hmm. you know, that's right. Okay. Uh, we knew you were sheltered. Well, yeah, I was a sheltered <laughs> kid. Yeah, I didn't I didn't get out too much. Uh, not in the Christian area, anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I never I've never been to a Christian concert. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. And I know that uh, some of the youth have, right? They, uh, uh, some that, of us have, too. Oh, some of you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, see there, I'm still out. I'm kind of off the record. But, but yeah, and I, I can, I, I'd like to go now. Yeah. You know, There's one uh, coming up in two weeks. It's, and... it's kind of amazing that you see all these people that really, uh, it, 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 it does something for your soul. It does. I'll tell you. Yeah. Anyway, we're not alone in this world. Uh, <laughs> that's one of the things I thought about, you know. Uh, we turn around and... Uh, think we're alone we look at all the evil that's in the world everything that you see uh, d degrades the Christian aspect you know one, one of the one of the slides in the uh, in Noah's Ark I don't know if you know Ken Ham or, or, or talk, I don't know how much y'all read or whatever anyway uh, he's the guy that kind of founded this Noah's Ark type thing you know and, and uh, he was talking to old Bill Nye which I mean he's an intelligent guy there's no doubt about it but he is biased very biased and it's easy to pick up on uh, and he, they were standing there in the ark. And, of course, Nile was talking about, well, yo, this ain't right, this ain't right, this ain't right, you know. And uh, Ken asked him, he says, well, tell me something. He says, uh, of course, this is an old TV screen, right? And he says, uh, what difference does it make to you what I believe? If I believe there's a God in heaven that created and spoke all this, brought it into existence, and you don't, what difference does it make? He asked him three times, and he never answered. Mm -hmm. I just wondered, what is it about people that hate Christians or don't like them? A bunch of idiots, you know, whatever. I got real funny, I can tell you. That's going to be bad. Anyway, uh, I was going to tell another joke, but I think I'll wait. <laughs> I'll close with a, a, a funny note. And, and uh, there was a, uh, a 
pastor, kind of like old Tim, you know, he was uh, going around visiting the people in the area, right? He goes, knocks on the door, beats on it, beats on it. He knew somebody was home, and uh, but they never answered the door. So uh, he turns around, and gets his uh, uh, business card out. You know, he keeps business cards. They can find Baptist Church. Stuck it in the door. He wrote on there, uh, Revelation 3.20. Stuck it in the door. He leaves. Well, Sunday comes around. Offering plate comes around. There's his business card in it. It says Genesis 3.10. <laughs> Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Genesis 3.10 says, I was afraid to answer him because I saw you in the garden and I was naked. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you all for putting up with me. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Huh? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing me to spread your word, even if it's just a small degree, dear Lord. I, I just cherish the opportunity uh, and ask that you give me more opportunity. Thank you for all that you do for us, dear Lord. And we ask that you forgive us all of our many, many sins. And if, if, if all possible, Lord, increase our faith. Because we know we know you have the final hand, dear Lord. And, and it's, just, it's just tough on us to get past this morality uh, situation that we are in, dear Lord. We know we're not going to be trapped here. We're going home someday, dear Lord. But we just ask that you keep reminding us. We thank you for your many blessings, dear Lord. And forgive us where we fail you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you,